Well, dear colleagues, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the diagnostic consciousness of public cardiomyopathy. And actually, what I want to do, I want to tell our story in Florence. Last year, there was a review article published in a German journal. <clears throat> the title was Fabry disease often see rarely diagnosed. And that's what I believe it happens uh, almost everywhere, even in our center until uh, we started to work on it. And I'll just present what, has, uh, what was uh, evident in uh, 2002 when we already had a referral center for Anderson Fabry disease. It had a multidisciplinary approach, and at that time, we had only three families, nine patients diagnosed, four by the neurologist, and five by the nephrologist. And only one such, pa such patient had mild left ventricular hypertrophy. Then, uh, at that time, we were reviewing, in 2005, the results of our genetic screening in our hypertrophic endomyopathy cohort. And at that time, we still were doing only three sarcomeric genes, the most frequent ones. And here there were, there is the first results. Out of 88 patients, we were able to diagnose as myofilament sarcomeric positive 57% of the patient. And we had 38 patients remaining where no mutation was uh, uh, detected. And to our surprise, our geneticist called us because she said that uh, among these 38 patients, two of them had alpha calactosidase mutation, which gave a, a figure of 5% in this small cohort. So we were quite surprised and we had to enter the field of Fabry disease. We went on to see these patients. This was the mutation. The alpha calactosidase activity in leukocytes was very low just a bare two, and he, this was the ECG of this uh, first uh, proband uh, who had uh, severely, severe functional limitation. It was a male of 40 years of uh, age, and this was his echo with asymmetric hypertrophic adomyopathy, with a septum with a maximal thickness of 22, mild mother regurgitation and uh, mild left ventricular dilation with a normal ejection fraction and severe diastolic dysfunction. And this was responsible, of course, for his symptoms and severe functional mutation. The second case uh, was uh, what you would call now a cardiac variant, because uh, usually when they have this mutation, they have no other <coughs> organ involvement. Again, the alpha galactosidase activity in leukocytes was very low, about 2. Again, this was the ECG of the patient with clear biventricular hypertrophy. He was mildly symptomatic in his late 50s. And this was again a case of undistinguishable hypertrophic endomyopathy from the sarcomedic ones. Again, ejection fraction normal with severe diastolic dysfunction calculated by mitral inflow at TDI. <clears throat> a few years later, we had the data after screening eight sarcomedic genes in all this cohort. And at that time, we already had collected 203 patients and uh, the prevalence of uh, sarcomeric myofilament positive rose to 62%. Anyway, we still had 77 patients which were negative, and they were also tested for alpha galactosidase mutations. But however, we still got the two patients that we already had been detected before. So increasing the number did increase the prevalence, it lowered the prevalence, which went down to 2.6%. So it depends also on the cohort that you are examining. You know, if you're just seeing a small cohort, of course the figures may go high. At that time, then, we started to screen for anderson fabry disease in our patient population of HCM. And we uh, planned 200 HCM patients. And in 43 females, probands with age at diagnosis greater than 40 years, which were negative at sarcomeric mutation screening, we did the mutation in the alpha gal galactosidase gene. And the number was zero. We didn't find any. Then we went on males, 
and we consecutively uh, analyzed leukocyte alpha galactosidase activity in 157 male probands with age diagnosis greater than 30 years. And in this case, we found two additional cases, which were then confirmed by genetic analysis. So our prevalence now in a large cohort of males is about 1%, 1.3%. This is uh, one of these cases that were detected uh, you know, through this screening with alpha galactosidase activity. The level of leukocyte alpha galactosidase is still very low, 3.4. This is this, you know, striking ECG with a short PR and with striking uh, voltage criteria for uh, hypertrophy, the ventricular hypertrophy. And this is a typical case, just similar to the ones that you have seen before, with normal ejection fraction and severe diastolic dysfunction. Of note, in this case, who was very young and he had severe function limitation due to dyspnea and angina, he had no coronary artery disease or coronary arteriography. So we performed the analysis of my harder map 4 after dipiridamol infusion by PET, which is able to measure uh, in different areas of the myocardium the increase of myocardial blood flow following the dipiridamol infusion. And as you can see, it didn't increase, it even actually lowered it after dipiridamol infusion. So this, this is severe microvascular dysfunction, which is another characteristic of this disease due to the endothelial uh, storage of uh, uh, GL3 and to the obstruction of the uh, microvascular uh, vessels. At this point, you have to wonder, so after all this uh, testing, after, you know, what have we learned from uh, what we have been doing in the last uh, three years? And I would suggest to you that, you know, if you want to diagnose fabric cardiomyopathy, you may select patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, defined, as you know, by a wall thickness of 15 millimeters, and age a diagnosis of at least 30 years, because we believe that the great majority of the patients need to have at least 30 years uh, before having really such an amount of thickness and of hypertrophy. But also, you have to take in account that your Fabry disease patients may be hidden into those patients with mild ventricular hypertrophy, which are often diagnosed as uh, hypertensive cardiomyopathy or hypertensive left ventricular hypertrophy with wall thickness between 12 and 15 millimeter and have additional multi-organ involvement like mild proteinuria or mild renal impairment or angiokeratoma which should be looked for in the trunk and above all around the uh, pants of the patients. How can we be helped in searching for how for fabric cardiomyopathy? There are some red flags which we have to take in account. The history, for instance, of the family history or the history of the patient. And in this case, the personal history is that in childhood, usually, a great you know, part, a great majority of the patient have a history of neuropathic pains that sometimes then disappear. Or they had hypoidrosis with the high temperature, so-called fever, but instead it's not fever, following, for instance, physical activity and particularly disturbing because this leads patients to have antibiotic treatment for a supposed infective disease. Or they had in their childhood abdominal cramps and diarrhea. And above all in the family history, it's very useful because there must be absence of male-to-male -male transmission. So if your proband, you're testing his, fa your, his father and the father has hypertrophic adenopathy, you can just exclude uh, fabric cardiomyopathy because this is a mixed link disease that is passed by the mother. On an examination, you have to take in account the presence of angiokeratoma, as uh, was shown before even by Professor Leonard, but also the red flag is the proteinuria and the mild renal failure beyond cornea verticillata, which of course you can ascertain only if your uh, eye specialist uh, is going to see your patient. The cardiologist's reflex 
comprise sinus bradycardia and chronotropic incompetence, which you may assess by Holter monitoring. In older age, AV block, so if you have a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy patients in the fifth or fourth decade who goes into complete AV block, suspect fabric cardiomyopathy. Of course, short PR interval, it was said before, in a minority of patients, and of course, voltage criteria and ST changes for leventricular hypertrophy. <clears throat> Most of the patients look non-obstructive, although it's been uh, reported that you may have latent obstruction. You may also select your patient by the presence of right ventricular wall hypertrophy. Although this is not easily seen by echo, it may more easily be detected by MRI. And also, the subset of patients which are of uh, greater interest are the rarest patients with concentric LVH. Of course, if you have, if you use in your hypertrophic adenomyopathy patient uh, MRI and you detect late gallurinium enhancement in the posterior wall, then again suspect fabric adenomyopathy. In conclusion, I would say that uh, right now, I believe that uh, we all know that uh, if you have to suspect fabric cardiomyopathy in women, you, have, you can only rely on alpha galactosidase gene mutation. While in men, as I said before, you know, it's just enough to use and to evaluate the leukocyte level or alpha galactosidase activity. And hope, hopefully, in the future, you know, there is a good hope because uh, the dry blood spot has been validated, so you don't need to take fresh blood or frozen blood that has to be sent to specialized laboratories in order to detect and to calculate this value, but this can be done through a dry blood spot that can be maintained for one month. Within one month you can send it to the lab and it's rather easy to store. So let me give you the final end of the story. Because right now in Florence, in 2010, we have actually 15 families with Fabry disease. The same number that was detected by the neurologists and the nephrologists, but we contributed with 10 additional patients, either with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or with left ventricular hypertrophy. And then doing a systematic family screening, which is rarely complete because some patients refuse to be screened, we have now 47 patients, some males, but more females, of course, being an X-linked disease, you know, with a wide range of years. And, uh, you know, in this kind, you know, this subset of patients, you will have, most of them will have some leventricular hypertrophy, about 50% of them had, as it was reported by my colleagues in the past in the literature, with a range between 13 and 26 millimeter and only a minority, 14%, will clearly have hypertrophic adenomyopathy. But in order to have, uh, 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 really, to give all the advantages of nowadays technology to our patients, which is treatment, specific treatment for this disease, I believe that uh, we all have to take into account that we all have to think about Fabry disease and we have to try to diagnose that through our ECG and echocardiography lab. Thank you very much for your attention.